Well, it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> that is the AirPods Max. Tech Gooch. It's been almost a week now that I've had these and originally I was kind of going for the two week window kind of like I always do to be honest for most things I do but I've had a lot of time to spend with these guys uh, over the last well five days um, and I think I have a pretty good idea of what I like and what I don't like. So what it comes down to it is are these worth the $550 price tag that Apple has placed on them. And that is a heated question because there is no right or wrong answer. It all comes down to, are the features good enough to, to justify that price out of your pocket? And nobody can tell you right or wrong for that. All I can do is tell you what's right or wrong for me. And this is a lot of money for me to spend on a pair of headphones. That said, I was willing to sell out the $300 when I bought these. Um, and these are the these are the Quiet Comfort 35s, which is essentially the mo the pair that I've been comparing these to the most because it's the pair that I own. I've also been looked at the Bose 700s, which are their, you know, latest headphone that Bose offers. Uh, the WH-1000 uh, MX4s from Sony. Uh, I've tried those out again uh, to, to really do a comparison with those. And um, this is the Generation 1 of the QC35s. They do have a Generation 2. Essentially what that adds is the voice assistance stuff that this does not uh, support. But sound and everything like that is what I'm mainly judging this on. If you are not an iPhone owner, you're not going to look at these. These are not for you. These are for iPhone owners. If you, <laughs> I don't understand why you would even look at an Apple product if you're not in the Apple ecosystem anymore. Um, you know, the, the starting point for any of this is going to be a MacBook or an iPhone and then work your way into the gadgets. So you wouldn't have an Apple Watch without an iPhone as well. That said, no matter how you push that, this is extremely expensive for a set of headphones. To get to the chase real quick, Am I sending these back? Am I, am I returning these? No, I'm, I'm going to keep them. And I'm going to give you my justifications because I did fight with myself over the last five days on whether I was going to keep these and continue to use them as I used these. I used the heck out of these. I really did. I used these a lot over the summer. Every time I cut the grass, I used these. Um, anytime I go on an airplane, obviously, that's a no-brainer. Um, last time I went on an airplane just last month, I was considering not taking these and using my AirPods Pro, but these have such better noise canceling that I couldn't do it. I just literally couldn't do it. I had to bring them. And that's where I sit in this whole thing, not even knowing that these were really coming out. When they released out, when they brought up the, the item that they were releasing these, I had to really consider whether or not doing to, to buy them or not. But yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring it in here a little bit closer and we're going to talk about what I like, what I don't like. So for those of you that have watched my initial thoughts video, uh, some of this will sound true and you'll, you'll recognize some of it. Um, and more is some of this, what I'm going to talk about these things is definitely came true after using them for, uh, for a decent spell. The, the headphones themselves, when they come out of the box, they come in their smart case. And when I first set them on, on my initial thoughts video, I actually pulled them out of the box for the first time and set it up. When I pulled them out of the case, and I kind of did that off video, but when I even tried it off, um, tried when I was trying to set these up, it would not come up on my phone, which was kind of weird. So like if you have your iPhone here, if you pull these out of the smart case, they attach automatically and they tell you, basically, if, if you haven't had them set up, this is like all the AirPods, you set them up through this. Well, my first time out of the box, it didn't do that. And I kind of now contribute that to, I guess my phone wasn't, running the latest software, which had the uh, AirMax support stuff in it, but it was kind of weird. It also worked, but it didn't work. It was kind of weird. So that the second day in, after my initial thoughts video, the next morning when I went actually to, to use these again, uh, it wouldn't connect to my phone. It was kind of weird. It would not connect. 
Even if I went into the Bluetooth settings and selected it, it would sit there and spin and say, could not connect. So I had to reset these. And basically to reset them, you push and hold both buttons for uh, whatever it is, five or 10 seconds. And then it starts blinking amber down here on the light. And it re basically resets. And then you go in and you remove it from your Bluetooth settings. And then you put them back in the smart case, you pull them back out, and it was like brand new. You never, you never set them up. And when I did that, everything has worked perfectly since. I don't know what happened the first time out of the gate, um, but I did want to bring that up real quick because if you have that happen to you and you had to do the manual Bluetooth set setup like I did on my initial thoughts video, yeah, just reset the thing and, and before you do that. Just reset it and, and get it to connect properly. Once I did that, I haven't had an issue since. And the reason, I mean, obviously it didn't connect, but I don't think it was working properly to begin with because I woke up the next day and the battery was even draining. It was just weird. So resetting it back to factory, I had to do that once and it's worked perfectly ever since. But I will say this, resetting it back to factory, pushing the two buttons and holding, real easy. Okay, since then. Um, things and thoughts about these guys. One, the build quality on these guys, right? We've talked about this and you've probably seen other videos on this. You have your aluminum ear cups, you have your stainless steel band up here. Um, I will admit that the mesh uh, comfort kind of top here, this guy here, uh, is, is a fabric and this could get damaged easier, I think, than almost anything else on the headphones, um, other than maybe the ear cushions themselves. Um, that's gonna be the most delicate portion Everything else is built like a tank on these things. Um, you, the the actual spring mechanism or that's built into the headband just feels great. So quality of build is fantastic on these. Uh, Apple hit a paw, it hit way above what everybody else is doing. Now you can look at that two different ways. One is, hey, these are awesome. They're built like a tank. They're they you can feel the heft of them, and they're gonna last a long time. The second portion of that, however, is they're built like a tank and they weigh a lot comparatively to other headphones. These sit on your heads and they're a lot more noticeable sitting on your head. That said, this comfort band does take a lot of that pressure off from what I, from what I can tell at least. Um, that and how well it springs to the actual ears that, with the, the memory foam, it grips onto the head so well that you, it doesn't slip around on you. But it, it is noticeable. You will notice it. There is no doubt about it. Um, uh, that you know, they there's a reason that these guys use as much plastic as they do, because plastic is lighter. Um, so this is less noticeable. It's not going to be um, you know as pushing and draining on uh, for weight on your head. But I have not gotten to any point, even for long term use, that this felt uncomfortable at all. So I think Apple is teetering on a balance, right? You almost wish, oh man, could you do it all in stainless steel? Then it'd be really heavy. I think it would go too far. So they, they, they did that mix of materials to get the weight where they felt comfortable with it, that it wasn't going to be draining on you being too heavy, but it wasn't so underbuilt that it felt cheaper. This feels like a premium product. It feels that way. You put them in your hands and you'd be like, whoa, I bet these are expensive. Just by feeling it because of how well it's built. And that's something to say about it. So I, I, I want to make sure I stress that importantly enough. Um, that said as well, you know, every every set of headphones that you buy, you can actually pull these ear cups off. Now, the, they're not the quickest and easiest, but they, they do pop off, right? And you can hear, you hear that, right? It's kind of a plastic clicky stuff. Apple thought about that and made it really easy with the magnetic ear cups. I think that's fantastic. Now, the price that they're, they're charging for the, the ear cups is not cheap. Um, <laughs> they don't give these things away, and you have to buy them in pairs currently. Um, I don't know if you can quit to get them quite yet, but you can get them in all five colors that the headphones are available in. So if you wanted to swap this out for you know two uh, reddish pink ones or whatever, or two blue ones or, or the white ones, you can do that. Um, because they're all universal size and everything, obviously. But the nice thing is, is that the replaceability of this is, is very, very easy. You rip this or you ruin this or it starts wearing out or something. You know, it is memory foam. Foam wears out. Um, you can do that fairly easily. Or if you just want to customize it to your color. I kind of see this sitting where the Apple Watch was at one point. Where Apple may, once they get every all these initial orders done, they may offer when you go into the store, 
they'll they'll pull out a pair of headphones and then if you want a different set of ear cups they'll just swap the ear cups out for a different color and send you on your way with no additional cost with a different color ear cup I could see that easily happening I also see maybe uh, aftermarket companies making some ear cups for this that can even more be more colorful I'd like to see that I think that'd be pretty cool that said it is just one of those things that makes this product a little bit different I'm not going to say that this is worth $100 more because it's magnetic, uh, but it is cool, and I like that a lot. I do. Uh, it's just going to make, make it easier for, for swap outs, things like that. So, another thing to point out, right? Uh, the buttons. Let's get into that real quick because I have the original QC35s uh, and even the second gen QC35s are simplistic with their, they have a power uh, switch, and then they also have their uh, volume up and down and, and uh, basically pay pause multi button right here, right? Physical buttons. The, all the new modern headphones from both Sony and Bose, the Bose 700s and the, the Sony MX4s, they are all touch control for the most part, right? You have on your copy, you swipe up or you swipe down or you swipe back and forth. All right. I understand that there's people out there that, that think that's just great and awesome. I hate it. I hate it so much that I have not upgraded my headphones here. I couldn't justify going to the, the second gen of these because it, it, there wasn't a benefit so much for me. Yeah, I'd like the voice control and stuff, but really wasn't there. To go to the other Bose 700s or the the MX Source, I'd have to give up the physical buttons and go to the touch controls. I disliked them to the point where I refused to spend extra money to get that. Um, even if the noise canceling and sound was slightly better than these, nope, I wanted the physical buttons. In comes Apple with... Uh, you know what? Yeah, we're not going to do that either. We're going to put physical buttons on it. And not only just physical buttons, buttons that make sense. You know, this digital crown control is, in my opinion, the best volume control on any set of headphones I have ever used. Uh, you, you know, you push it, and you can you can uh, uh, reverse the direction, which one's volume up or volume down. That's all through the uh, through the Bluetooth controls on the on your phone. But you just you know volume up, volume down, simple, right? Play, pause is just click or click again. So play, pause, right? Double tap will go to the next track. Tri triple track will go, uh, tap will go back a, tra a track. Um, very similar to what you're getting on other ear uh, AirPods. Then you have this button up front that's that's for your your uh, your noise canceling uh, or transparency mode. So if it's in noise canceling, you click it and it goes into transparency mode. You click it again, it goes back to noise canceling. This is the best setup for for button control on any headphone I've ever used. It is so simplistic and works every single time. I am sorry, but I hate touch controls. And I understand that on the Bose, uh, you, you know, you can bring, or the Sony's, I think even, you can bring your hand up and just hold your hand on it and it goes into transparency mode and then you take your hand away and it goes back to noise canceling mode. <laughs> cool um no I, I don't like that either I, I tried it i thought it was a gimmicky I, you know i don't want to hold my hand up there I, i'm not a fan of it just come up i tap the button once and then it goes into transparency mode and it stays in transparency mode until i'm ready to go back to noise canceling mode which is fantastic so that whole setup for the buttons apple hit a home run with in my opinion so that said well built Really nice, and I will say about the ear cushions, again, the memory foam, probably the most comfortable ear cushion I've ever had in my life as well. So that's a huge bonus as well. So I got a lot of bone, really, really good things going on here. Now let's come to the sound and the noise canceling capability of it. And this is something, I, again, I can't show you because me playing through a microphone, it does no justice. You just gotta, I mean, I've, I've done so much listening with these that I, I have a pretty good idea of what I like and what I don't like. The base on these, now these are 40 millimeter drivers. These are 40 millimeter drivers. Um, all the, pretty much all the big headphones brands that are doing these size are doing 40 millimeter drivers. But how they do it, how they tune it, and how they, you know, do all their calculations and stuff in the background change how it sounds. The best way to describe this, this has better mids and bass. The Bose has definitely better highs um, and more poignant highs. The best way I could describe this is if I had a track that had a lot of really stabby, high uh, treble on it, and I cranked the volume up, this could get to the point where it almost felt like it was stabbing me in the ear um, with those highs, and this didn't. Um, for people that really like that high treble, high 
you know, the, you know, more balance to the high end. I think the Bose is definitely a better fit for that regard. Um, they do a better job at it. However, uh, the, once you get to a certain volume, it does come a little muddled. It just doesn't work as well. You could crank these up. Now, obviously, it's not recommended to go at high volumes for long periods of time, but of course, testing it, I have to test it all volumes. You could do this at any volume, and it really doesn't get that way. You don't, you, it doesn't blow out anything. Um, but it also doesn't point and p stab as high in those in those stabby moments is the best way I could describe it personally. Um, the low end though, so much more low end frequency range than specifically the Bose have, and even the newer modern stuff has. Um, Sony's do a really good job with this as well. Um, but that bass capability is is fantastic to have. For listening to music, it is just one of many reasons why you want it. But my biggest thing that I love about it, and I listen to music with these a lot. I mean, I listen to audiobooks. I've listened to podcasts and stuff with them. But where the bass really helped was watching movies. And that's what I do when I'm on an airplane or I'm you know, doing something where I don't like to use my in-ear headphones. I want over the ear. I want the comfort of long-term use. I use these guys. Uh, and playing movies blew my mind how much better these were than these because playing movies the the it almost was sub was subwoofer-esque in the capability of the low range now it's not going to be like i have a 12 inch subwoofer in the corner of my room that's going to be really powerful but i'm not joking when i tell you that um there's a specific scene that i was i listened to multiple times with both sets of headphones uh, it's from Interstellar. It's when they actually go to the first uh, planet uh, and there's a wave about to hit them and, you know, all this stuff happens. I listened to that scene multiple times where they cranked at very, various volumes, right? And when I, when, there was parts on it, on this, that you could almost feel the air pressure blowing through your, by your ears and out the ear cups. It felt like it was vibrating on my head. It was awesome. I mean, awesome and then i went back to these guys again and it didn't happen and then i went back okay let's find out this again and i watched the same scene again and it was just it blew my mind how much better these sounded than these in watching movies it is so much better that that specific reason right there is why in the end after i watched those scenes multiple times i said yep i'm not getting rid of these these are fantastic i can justify it now because it it just sounds great with that mixture of all the various audio tones and getting the lower frequency range and getting that that low end you just don't get typically with most headphones and now it isn't so powerful but it it's there and i love being able to hear it love it absolutely love it so um yeah there's certain things that the bose is tuned better for uh, I, I absolutely agree, um, but you know that's what happens when you have two headphones. Is somebody's gonna like these better, and somebody's gonna be like these better. It's kind of how it is. I think um, you know, depending on the audio profiles you like. The best thing is go out and try them. I mean, you can go out to the various stores and try these things. And of course, right now because of COVID, it's harder. But um, that's the only way. If you really don't know if you're gonna like the audio profile. Uh, if you like it a little bit heavier hitting than these, then then these are, are definitely better. Um, the other thing that, uh, and, and that's a small dislike, I guess, about these guys is the higher range. Yes, these hit a little bit higher on the, on the trebles on certain things. So, like, people talking sometimes, the, it comes through a little crystal clear, more crystal clear on this, especially when a lot of stuff's going in the background with, like, low tone stuff. But I prefer this better. But that is one thing to say these you can hear a little bit more of the voices the other thing that i obviously don't like is if you watch my initial thoughts video is this thing this thing is stupid like straight stupid uh and it's kind of funny i did my initial thoughts video i i, I recorded it then i went on and i edited it and then i i posted it and then while i was posting uh, while i was uploading to youtube i was going on youtube and i saw mkbhd did his review and i watched his review while my video was uploading <laughs> And he said basically the same stuff that I said, which is great to know that I'm not the only one that thinks that this is stupid because hopefully Apple will hear us. you got to get rid of this thing. I mean, great. You, you, you gave it to us. It's free. 
I, uh, that's how I see it with this headphone. This is a joke, a big joke. You need to bring out a better case because I'm not going to travel with this thing. This thing sucks. I don't understand why you made this. This is stupid. Whoever made this deserves to get demoted or fired. This is dumb. I'm sorry. Really dumb. It doesn't even look good. It doesn't. I'm sorry. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible piece of, of fabric with some magnets built into it. We need to get either A, Apple needs to step up with their stuff and offer us a real case for these things because the last thing in the world that I want this to be after $550 is marked up, dented, and, and messed up. I will be extremely upset if that ever happens. Um, now, of course, scratches are going to happen. That's use. I mean, even with these guys, right? Even like that ear cups are all kind of cracked and everything. It happens. I, I use my headphones. I understand that, but I don't want these destroyed because I put them in my bag and something hooked it, right? Especially the fabric up here. And this doesn't protect almost anything. Yeah, I can... You can say that they protect all oh, the biggest flat surface on them, but I still have things that'll scratch it down here. I mean, a dent... Uh, it, it's it's not hard, right, at all. So it, it, if something hits this, you could dent the aluminum. And then, of course, the fabric up here is ex completely exposed. I apologize, but no, no. This this is not acceptable. This is absolutely not acceptable. I, you Apple, you make better cases for your phones than you make for your headphones. And the headphones are just as expensive. So come on, man. Please bring out a decent pair, a decent case. Somebody has to, and I and I know that people are working on figuring out where the magnets are placed. It looked like somebody already found out where the the sleep magnets are placed because that's what happens when you put it in this case. It goes to sleep. Fantastic. But if somebody brings out a case that hugs these bad boys and protects them, first thing I'm buying. So, in the end. I love these headphones. Uh, you know, whether or not I have it on transparency mode so I can understand what I'm saying and, and uh, I don't have to yell, um, to the ease of the volume controls, the quality of the sound, specifically uh, because I use my over the ear headphones probably 60 to 70% of the time for watching movies. These blow these out of the water. Listening to music, these are good. I think these are better. Um, they're more even tone. They bring the lower range, like I said. Noise canceling. I can't say that these are light years better than this. It's definitely a step up. This morning, I was really doing some tests with the noise canceling, and I kind of sat outside the shower door while my, my daughter was taking a shower. So she had the shower running. She had the fan on in the bathroom. She had her music playing in there, and she was singing. So four big noises coming out of there at the same time. And... Our doors are hollow core doors, so they don't really stop a whole lot of sound. So, I kind of stand out there, and I went back and forth between these two. Uh, and I had been doing this several times during the week with other sounds and stuff, but this one was really good because there was so much sound in so many different frequencies and this big range of things, from the low hum of the just the water running um, and, the, and the fan running, to her music and her singing. And these definitely are better. Not light years better, five to ten percent better in terms of if I was to really just justify it down than what I was getting out of my QC 35s. So, if I was buying these because of noise canceling and I wanted to be better noise ca canceling, excuse me, uh, definitely not worth, well, in general, three hundred dollars more than what you're going to buy these for right now. You can get these for like 260 270 I think, right now. Uh, the QC 35 Generation 2 with the voice control. So, these aren't worth 300 bucks more than this for noise cancelling. Uh, definitely worth a little more, uh, especially if I'm comparing them to the, the well, right now I think you get the Bose 700s for like 339 and then in between the two you got your Sonys, right? Um, but build qualities was 100% absolutely better on these than any of the other headphones that, I, that we've been talking about. So, anything in the category of a premium home user uh, headphone um, or traveler headphone. I think these are the best build quality of all of them, the best button setup of all of them, um, the best if not equal to the uh, the noise canceling at the top end. So good job Apple for your first true over ear noise canceling experience. You hit the top mark with it. 
Uh, I'm not going to say they did light years better, but it is as good, if not maybe slightly better than the best on the market currently. Um, we'll see what comes out of Sony and, and Bose next. Uh, like I said, the button controls, I think, is best on the market personally. I, and of course, having that digital crown, it just works. It just really, really works. Uh, the comfortability, it's extremely comfortable, as comfortable as any of the other headphones, if not better. I think the foam is better on these than the other ones, absolutely. These are heavier, so they do sit a little heavier. That said, I liked it better. I like the heavier feel better. I'm the, also the other person that really liked the heavy iPhones, like the iPhone 4s when they were stainless steel. I liked that. I like having that extra weight. I know there's other people that, are, that think the opposite. Lighten that thing down, make it as thin as possible. I disagree with that. I don't like that. I like something that's a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, a little bit meatier. Personally. It's a personal. Um, so the lightness is, is not something I'm... I, I, I don't want it to be so heavy that I want to take it off after a while. That's too heavy. But these don't hit that point. At least on my head. So the fit, feel, and finish, top notch. Another thing that I didn't bring up yet is... There's no brand label on these things anywhere. On the outside of the, of the shell, the complete outside, all the way around, there's not any text at all. The only text you're going to find is inside the ear cups right at the top. And that's where it says designed by Apple in California, and it gives you the serial number and stuff, tells you that, you know, assembled in China, gives you that information. Um, that's awesome. They feel so confident in their brand anymore that they don't even have to have to put a big apple on these things. Thank you for not doing that. I think it would look stupid if there was a big apple on the ear cups. Um, not to say that I don't like my Apple products. I do. The MacBooks or the iMacs have that big Apple logo, but it makes sense. On here, it just wouldn't look good. It really wouldn't. So, you see these, you know exactly what they are, and that's what they're going by. They're going off recognition by the actual product. The other thing that I was considering was, you know, these, how you actually extend and retract these headphones. Um, I was worried, you know, because they are just friction fit. Okay, after wearing these for a while, is it going to do the same thing? Is it actually going to extend a little bit? Zero. I have had none. Now, of course, I don't know two years down the road, is that friction fit still going to be as tight? Probably. But that is something to think about, right? If you're constantly, especially if you're constantly moving them up and down, I don't know what that's what that looks like. Um, but to this day, it has not moved at all other than me physically moving it. This is a joke and deserves to just get thrown because it sucks. But I have to use it because it's the only way to turn the headphones off. So... If there's three things that I don't like about these headphones, one of which I really don't not like, but it is something to say, and that was about the audio profile. It's a little bit not as good as at the peak uh, talking stuff. So if I'm, if I'm watching a movie and a lot of music and stuff going on in the background and somebody's talking, I can pick it up a little bit better on this. I, I can still understand it completely. I'm just trying to pick out nuances. This does it a little bit better, but that's also because it doesn't bring up the bass profile that these do, and I'd rather have the bass profile. But that is something to say. Two, that smart case. Hate it with a passion. And three is having to use that terrible sock puppet to actually turn these things off because I can't turn them off with a physical button. You know, these guys have a physical button. I slide it off, and they're, they're off. Off, off. I can let them sit for six months before I turn them back on, and the battery will still be great on them. That is something to say about these that you cannot say about these. These will degrade the battery over time. They go to sleep when you put them in the case. Otherwise, you got to let them sit on the counter, and I think it's two hours. You have to let them sit there for two hours before they put themselves to sleep. And in that case, even when they're in sleep, they're in an ultra-low power mode, which is still draining battery. It's like anything modern that stays on because it wants to be on like that. That's exactly what it is. They don't want the delay that when I kick this on, i got to wait for it to connect and everything. 
these don't do that. They are almost instantly connected, ready to go. As soon as you pull them out of that case. That's nice. But give me the option. I think they could have put... an Like, maybe just put it in where you push and hold the digital crown. And maybe they could do this software-wise. Push and hold the digital crown. I turn it off. That way I can get whatever bag or case I desire to, to fit this thing. And I don't have to worry about that thing. Because I hate that thing. I hate it. <laughs> so... Thank you for sticking by to the end of this long-winded video. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I hit about every single note on these guys. Um, we didn't talk about the charger. It's a lightning charging port. Um, and I do like that. If you plug that in for five minutes, you're getting like an hour and a half of music time out of it. That's awesome. There's a lot of benefits that... Uh, small things that are just, are just what you would expect. But in the end, are these worth $550? For the right audience, yes. You can go out to the store and look at headphones. 70% of the people out there look at the $300 or, well, this is like $260 or whatever, 270 bucks right now, would look at that and say, I'm not spending that money on a pair of headphones. Those are, this is for you. If you look at these and these are everything you need and you don't need anything else, then really these aren't for you. If you're looking for a premium quality build with good noise canceling and does really good with music and movie profile. And we didn't really even talk about spatial audio, the capability of that whole spatial experience that Apple offers with their AirPods Pro and now the AirPods Max. Spatial audio sets it apart for a completely, specifically when watching movies, because when I'm watching that movie from the tablet, it seems like the audio is coming from the person's mouth. I turn my head, it's still coming from this direction. I turn my head the other way, it's still coming from this direction. That is awesome if you're that type of person and you you appreciate those little things with the sound profile experience and the stage pl uh, uh, platform that they're creating with this then this is the headphone for you it could be obviously you still have to justify the price it's not cheap but they sound great they sound great the battery life is good just as good as this downside is is that stupid case oh, i hate that case apple please 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 bring us out a case that we deserve we spent the money get us the case we deserve thank you for watching to the end subscribe share like the video and comment below we'll catch you back here on TechUch for another future video review we'll see you soon Thank <laughs> you.